Welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial and in today's episode we shall create some very basic materials. We're gonna create a basic color material, something that looks a little bit metallic, a gem material, a glass material, some regular texture materials and some very basic snow material. So the first thing, what actually is a material? Material is basically the color of the mesh. Uh, we can change that by selecting any of our meshes and then in the right side we have the materials tab and then we can simply select any material we want and it's going to change its color. If we want to reset it back to default we can click on this reset to default thingy and it's going to set it back to default value. The default value is if we open up the mesh itself here at the top right you can see the mesh, whatever mesh we select in here and save the asset, that is going to be the default material for that specific mesh. So now let's create our first material. To do so in the content browser let's right click, let's create a material and let's call this color matte. Let's open this up and inside of here we have a bunch of options that we need to fill in and we don't necessarily need to fill in all the things, we can just fill in one if we want and obviously the most important one would be the base color. And so I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna look for the constant and I'm gonna use a constant 3 vector for this one and that is going to be our base color. There is also a shortcut you can use by holding keyboard key 3 and clicking, you are creating the same thing. And now let's change the actual color because as of right now it's black, so let's double click on this guy let's change this to I don't know let's say blue color click OK it's gonna take a moment then then you're gonna search, see in the preview that it is in a blue color now if you want to have multiple just colors or whatever if you want to basically use the same settings in the material you just want to change some properties it's not wise to duplicate the same materials it's better to use material instances and in order to change these values so in this case this color we need to promote this to a parameter so we can right click and convert to parameter. Let's call this color. Now to modify the metallic specular and roughness I want to add some more properties to this. So we could hold one and create a constant but this is not allowed to be changed in the material instance. We are not going to be able to see it there. Instead I'm going to use a parameter. We could right click and convert our uh, constant to a parameter. So let's call this metallic or another option would be just holding keyboard key S and clicking and this gives us the same thing. So let's call this specular and then let's click once more and let's call this roughness. So these are the three values we're going to use and you're going to see a difference as soon as I connect all three of these the material is no longer going to be shining because by default specular is at 0.5 and it gives a little bit of a shine. So for the color that's going to be it. Save this, it's going to take a second so be patient and once it's done we can close this. So now I'm going to bring in a sphere into my world so I can actually give the color to something and we can apply this simply by dragging and dropping this on top of the mesh or selecting a material inside of the details panel. Now like I mentioned for different colors um, we want to use material instances. How do we do that is by right clicking on the material and at the very top we have create material instance. Let's call this red matte and let's bring this to our second sphere, this one right here. Then we can open up our instance and this looks way different. Um, so all of our parameters are available over here. So we have our parameter groups. Let's enable these so that we can edit these and the cool part about this is we can see the changes live. So if we make this, let's make this pink, save that. Now let's let's give this some more properties. So let's give the metallic. Uh, the metallic roughness and specular usually are values from 0 to 1. In some cases you can go higher or lower but there isn't that big of a difference. So if we change the metallic to 1 you can see it gives like a metallic look, it reflects uh, just like a super shiny material would. And the shine and reflection is happening because the roughness is at zero, so it's not rough, it's very very glossy, so if we change this to like 0.5 you can see it, the reflection is basically gone. And for the specular, well with this specific material there isn't any big difference as you can see when I change this value, but there is a bigger difference when we change something like uh, let's say texture material which actually uses an actual texture, there is a bigger difference on that one. So that's basically it for like super super very basic materials. Now let's try to create some glass. So what I will actually do is duplicate my color material because I want to have some more properties and let's call this glass matte. Let's open this up and inside of this material, since glass is transparent, we need opacity. But by default you can see opacity is not available to us, it's disabled. So let's select our base node. In the details panel on the left side we can change the blend mode from opaque 
to the translucent. But as soon as we do that, the metallic specular and roughness get disabled. We can re-enable those by scrolling even further until we find the translucency. And in the lighting mode, we can change it to be surface translucency volume. And this instantly re-enables these options. There are loads and loads of options in here. So I'm not going to explain all of those. It's going to take forever for me to do so. I'm just going to talk about the most important ones. So let's create another scalar and let's call this opacity for our opacity. Let's plug that in and maybe by default, select your parameter and change the default value so that the actual material is visible. Otherwise with zero opacity, it's going to be invisible. Now there is one more thing that I like to add for glasses and that is the refraction. Um, not really sure how to explain this, but this gives a little bit more realistic look to the glass. So I'm going to call this refraction and I'm going to plug that into the refraction input like so. So now that I've saved this, let's bring in actually I'm going to use a cube for this one because with the sphere, uh, the glass isn't going to look as good as it could. So let's use a cube on this one and then let's bring our glass material on top of it and you can see it's transparent. But well, there is a little bit of a visual glitch you can see with the refraction. It's not exactly what we want it to be uh, because the values are not what I would like them to be. So I'm just going to create a material instance again. Let's call this yeah, glass mat instance. Let's drag that on top. Let's open up our instance and let's now start editing it. So I'm going to enable all of these properties again. So first I'm going to change the color. I don't want to have a blue color. Let's make this, let's make this a little bit grayish sort of. And then let's give the metallic of value one. And that gives a little bit of a shine to it. As long as we have the roughness at zero with the specular one. Again, it's not changing much in this case. Then for the opacity, let's have something like point, point 0.6 perhaps and refraction. If we change this to one, it gives us the exact view that we can see without the material in front of us. But if we would change this to, let's say like two, well, this does change the image a little bit. And now this gives a little bit of a more realistic look to it. So that would be how to create a very basic glass and using exactly the same methods, we can create ourselves some nice looking gems. So I'm going to duplicate my glass material instance and I'm going to call this gem instance. Let's drag that on top of our gem and well, it already looks kind of cool. So let's open this up. Let's give him some different color. Um, gems usually are red. So let's give this guy a red color, something like this. And instantly you can see it looks really, really cool. Let's give this like 0.8 maybe on the opacity. And this allows us to create some pretty cool looking gems. Now, one more thing that I want to talk about is actually having like actual materials that display like something like bricks or wood or whatever. So to do so, let's again, uh, let's let's just create a new material. Let's call this texture mat. Let's open this up. And in this one, we want to look for a texture sample. So we have a texture sample. Then by selecting this node in the details panel on the left, we can select our texture. I'm just going to select the first brick thingy that's available to me. Then plug in the RGB into the base color and technically we already have our material. But the issue is, well, it's shiny and it's very flat as you can see. And in most games they use normal maps to add some bumpiness to the material. So let's add another texture sample and I'm just going to hold keyboard key T down and click and that's going to give me the same node and I will plug this RGB into my normal map. Then I'm going to select the normal map. Uh, not all models will come with this. You might have to create this on your own, uh, but for the default content, they do come. I'm going to add the normal map that is used for this specific material. And instantly you can see, you can see like holes in it, like there should be where there are bricks and where there is concrete in between. So this gives it a way more realistic look. And now I'm going to add some scalars for my metallic specular and roughness and I'll be right back. So there we go. We have that. Now let's drag that on top. And here you can see our bricks with normal maps. They are looking quite cool without normal maps. Well, it's going to be a very flat texture. Now I will create a material instance so that I could show you a little bit about that roughness and specular. 
So now let's change the specular to one and instantly you can see it creates like a gloss to it. Obviously for the bricks it's not the best option but it might be a good thing for like wooden floors or something give it a little bit of a gloss. Uh, if we change this metallic to one you can see it instantly turns into like a metallic material. Obviously well for the bricks you're not gonna use that but well you get the point. And for the bricks I will probably use roughness of one or close to one so that it's rough so it's not shining and it looks better. So that's the basics of the regular texture materials but now if we would apply the same material to this big wall give it a second to compile the shaders you can see that these bricks are very very huge um, we can change that we can open up our material and we can look for a node called texture coordinate we, we then need to plug this into our UVs of our texture samples in all of those in our normal map and our regular diffuse map and then let's select this texture coordinates node and let's say we want to have instead of having just one texture per that whole square we want to have let's say like 10 in horizontal and vertical so the top one is the horizontal one and this is the vertical one but there is going to be a small issue with this and the issue is that well this wall now looks a little bit better but now over here these bricks are super super tiny as well. So in most cases you want to have your materials set up correctly already in the modeling software. Obviously Unreal Engine does support uh, scaling these textures but it is better if you have everything correct right off the bat and it just simply saves you a lot of time. So for me in my case I'm just going to remove this and simply reset the material for this mesh back to default. Now one last thing that I want to show you real quick is how we can make a very simple snow material. It's probably not the best looking one but it's pretty decent so what I will do is simply let's duplicate the color one and let's call this snow mat. Let's open this up and so for the color I'm gonna change this to be like white color and I will add a normal map with a textured sample plug that into the normal map and let's see I think there was one rock uh, so let's use the detailed rock normal map yet yeah, this is the one that I was looking for so with this being done we can now save this close it off and basically the material is exactly the same material as this one right here but with a normal map so if we drag that on top of it you can see it creates some pretty decent looking snow if we would use like a landscape it would look even better if we actually had like a deformed uh, terrain instead of just having a flat cube. So let's try to upgrade this even more. Let's create a material instance out of this. Let's open this up. And so well snow is not exactly all perfectly white. It's a little bit more grayish. Uh, so let's apply this so we can see it live. So it would be something like this and then let's give this some specularity. Uh, one might be too much so like 0.5 perhaps would be a good value. So now it is shining a little bit and it is looking a little bit nicer. So this is how you would create a very very basic snow. Obviously there are many many techniques which would create you a even better results than I just showed you but this is just the very very basics. So that's going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something new and like always make sure to subscribe. Leave a comment down below with any questions you might have and I see you in the next episode.